I'm Alan Mandic, Mandic Really, and this is Earth in One Hour. Joel does Earth in 60 Seconds, those kind of things. Well, I've been stuck at my booth here at the show all weekend long, and there's only one hour left in it, so I've got to see everything in that time. Let's go do it. Coco Press has a much bigger setup this year. They've got, well, their printers are actually being released. Ellie and I are talking about doing a live stream build of a Coco Press 3D printer. Would you be interested in that? Let me know in the comments. We've got the Prometheus. This is an open source SLA 3D printer, so resin 3D printing in the vein, the style of like a Voron machine. And we've been talking for months about me maybe building one. They gave me a controller board. Let me know in the comments whether you'd like to see that get built. I'm really interested in the idea of it. I just gotta find, you know, time. Tripod's garage here. So, how was your weekend? Busy, busy, busy. Lots of, lot, oh, yesterday was insane. How yeah. about with you? Uh, app, uh, it would help if I focus a little bit. That's okay, uh, I'm always out of focus. Uh, no, you you're have you watching my videos? You're just naturally yeah, already. Oh, yes. So, yes. Uh, it's been extremely busy. We gave you the way the LDO Trident. We did Steve Builds and I put together. So awesome. yeah, he's a great guy. He's a great, great. guy. I've said that so many times in videos at this point, but I'm gonna keep saying it. So. Yeah, hey, I mean, kissing rears is pretty good in this business. <laughs> it's not a bad idea. <laughs> All right, awesome. Have yourself a good rest of your yep. show too. Yep. Hey, folks, Tripod's Garage, and time to wander onward. Yeah. We've got the folks over Can here at LDO. Uh -huh. I'm having one too. Yeah, it's almost done. I'm yeah. yeah I'm I'm but... doing Earth quick. So we got yeah. Positron yeah. here. Yeah. yeah. The Positron is close at this point, is it not? The kit's at least end of year. End of year. End of this year. Right. I'm always in a Pelican case. Oh. Yeah. Coming in a Pelican case. So yeah. that's fancy. The printer that fits in a filament box will come in a Pelican case. Yeah. Yeah. But I've seen prints coming off of this thing the all yeah. weekend, and I'm kind of blown away yeah. by what I'm seeing on this thing. I really want to play with one. Looking forward to the kids coming out. Sure, wait. I'll make sure we we'll get one. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, folks. I heard my name. You could have told me that early. I heard my name. I gave away a printer. What? Did I win it? Uh, no. <laughs> no, you did not. I did you give it one away? away? And luckily it went to somebody who is competent enough to finish the build on their own. Nice. So, That's awesome. yay. Congrats. And amazingly, the kit that I was giving away too, which was open online, anybody in the US could have won, somebody two people away from the table won. That's awesome. So both of them went home with people. I don't have to deal with any awesome. logistics after right. this. We got the folks over it here at Hugh Forge. I am doing Earth in like less than an hour because I've been stuck at the booth. Beautiful prints. I've been wanting to include this setup in in a video for so long. We gotta get to it. Hugh Forge, what are we got going? So Hugh Forge is a piece of software that gives you an STL file and blends filaments for you, predicts them so that you can then put those layer swaps, just layer swaps, only one color per layer, no more, into your slicer on any printer and print really cool artwork. And um, you don't need a special printer, you don't need anything special, you just need to know about your filaments or find them in our library, and you can make really amazing art. Oh, you've got a TV tool now, yeah? That is a new on? tool, it's free production, and Ajax is yep, so that's my creation, uh, trying to digitize the whole process of getting that TD value, because it can be daunting for somebody who doesn't quite understand what it means or how to read the, the swatches. So yeah, try to simplify it as far as possible and make it directly integrate into Hue Forge so that when you stick filament in, you automatically start adding it to your library. Hey, I recognize that machine. Over here at Fabrico, they are now the only US distributors of the Carvera desktop CNC setup. I know they're also selling the Xtool P2s now, so really expanding your ability stateside to pick up some of these more interesting maker tools that are coming to the market now from Fabrico. 3D Hub Canada, they just gave me one of the new better cooling ducts MJF printed set up for the Bamboo X1, so let me know if you'd be interested in me testing this out, get some better overhangs out of that printer. Oh. Your Bamboo Aftermarket Hot End. Oh, and a Bamboo Aftermarket Hot End now available as well. Uh, I think it's a little smaller than this, the actual unit you would get, but yeah, 
Uh, I've got PEI beds from them on my Vorons, and I, I get parts really quickly from them. They're based in Canada, but I, in the US, I still get things quick and really reasonably priced, too. 3D Hub Canada, check them out for your Boron parts, your bamboo parts, a lot of stuff available there. Over here at the E3D booth, we got various things going on. There's the Panda Revo. We'll talk about that in a second over with the folks at Big Tree Tech because it's a collaboration between E3D and them. We've got the Diamondback Revo nozzle. So now you've got a girl's best friend on the end of your nozzle with the Revo ecosystem for rapid nozzle changes and the Revo high temp variant. So folks printing the higher temp engineering materials still have an option as far as the Revo ecosystem for rapid nozzle changes but the you know, support that you need of the higher temperature thermistors and heater elements. Okay, over here at the BQ Big Tree Tech booth, we got the Panda Revo. That is a P1 series of bamboo printers. You've got a Revo hot end set up for that. So you can go higher flow than the stock bamboo hot ends can do, because let's face it, they're really not as high flow as they might like to claim they are. And then you also have the option of just the Revo ecosystem for nozzle changes. I'm curious about the implementation of this because you can't really PID tune a bamboo machine, but it's still really interesting and I have one on hand to play with, so we've got something to think, play with and actually see how it works out. They also now have the new Pro of the 5160 external stepper drivers, so if you're really pushing the limits of your machine, you've got an option from Big Tree Tech now as well. I've got an upcoming project where maybe we'll go that way. We might stick with the 5160 RGBs, yet to be determined. One that's kind of taken a lot of people by surprise and a bit by storm, Piopoli, formerly or mostly known for resin 3D printers, they're dropping a filament printer and it's kind of mind-blowing. You don't have belts. You don't have belt cog pulleys or motors like stepper motors we traditionally think of. So you're not getting the artifacts that we're always fighting when it comes to all of those factors. Really interesting and not the drag either. So it should be a really fast machine. It's running mainline Clipper and they are also sponsoring the Clipper team. So they seem to be doing things the right freaking way that so many other people are just not. Pretty aggressive price point for the size of this machine. I believe it's 300 by 400 by 300. That's correct, right, yeah. Yeah, so we got a rectangular build volume. It can be enclosed. There's an additional optional enclosure setup for this thing. Magneto X, this thing has taken me by surprise and a lot of people by surprise and generated a lot of buzz at Earth 2023. I'm really looking forward to seeing what they can do with this platform and what we can get out of these machines. Over here at the Lightburn booth, well, we've got a quick sneak peek for you. This is not a laser now, is it? Lightburn, they've got something new coming. CNC is coming to the, the whole team and ecosystem and well, look out for more at their upcoming event in the end of October. You know the folks at Lightburn, they produce a high quality software. So I'm really curious to see what they can do with a different platform. 10 minutes until it closes the river. Ten minutes left in the show, that was the warning. Next to my booth here is what I kind of am just gonna call Creator Alley. A handful of creators got together and just booked out the space so they could have a chill space and they could all be in one location for everybody to come and find them. Like Photos Mint, Clock Spring, Filament Stories, Asylum Life, Creatrix Brit. There's so many folks that were just hanging out here right next to me. I didn't have a chance to talk to them as much as I would have liked to. I'm friends with half of these people and love to be friends with the rest of them too. And you know, here we are. There's my sad little booth minus the Voron that we gave away. And folks, that is Earth 2023. This video I am sure is an absolute disaster of a time because I am a disaster of a person at this point. There's one really important thing that I haven't gotten into a video yet. Oh, wait, 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 Jewel! Ah, oh, I don't know what just happened. Head, headbutt, David. <laughs> Seriously, one very important thing I haven't gotten done. There's one very important thing that I haven't achieved in this video in Earth 2023. What is that? Oh my goodness, really? Really? Really. He's got to warm up for this. He's got to warm up. It's been a while. I haven't... You haven't high-fived anybody in at least five minutes. Okay. Ready? Ready. That is Earth 2023.
By the way, I'm sorry if I wasn't looking at the lens on this camera and it looks really unprofessional in this video. This is the filming setup that I'm using right now where I've got the action camera and the big camera going at the same time so I get as much footage as I can since I'm on a time crunch in this video. It's been a blast. This is not nearly as produced as my normal videos ever would be, but this is Earth in less than an hour at this point. So what do you want? All right, folks, that's gonna wrap it up for this one. I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, maybe you'll enjoy last year's Earth video and this video that YouTube thinks is best for you. Catch you in the next one, folks.